Well, praise the Lord, family, Facebook, and friends. It's another Sunday morning. Glory to God. How many of you guys are excited that Jesus is alive and well? How many of you are excited for the Word of God? How many of you know the Word of God is essential? You know what? I got a message coming out. I'm not going to teach that right now, but you know, you know, the big talk there for a while was what was essential. I got a message called the Word of God is the most important thing. The Word of God is essential. But we're not going to talk about that today, amen, praise God. We'll save that for another day. Well, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Guys, we are getting ready to get into the Word of God. Let me tell you, how many of y'all have already started to experience victory and winning, amen, in 2021? I said, how many of you guys have already been experiencing victory and winning in 2021? Amen. Praise God. And uh, I, I do got a miracle to share with you guys, but I'm not going to do it today uh, regarding a healing uh, that took place within my mother. And we'll talk more about that later on, maybe today or maybe next week. Amen. Praise God. You talking about the miraculous. You talking about supernatural things happening in 2021. Well, I got a word for you guys. Get ready for some supernatural things and all the things that's been coming upon this earth here, especially with this COVID-19. I got a word for you again. Let me tell you, it's going to take the power of God. You know, thank God for, you know, uh, the quarantine and the medicines and all the things that they're coming up with. You know, thank God for man and his intellect, which comes from God. Thank God for medicine and all that, because it helps to keep us around here. But let me tell you, <clears throat> the time going to come, and I think the time has already come, praise God. It's going to require a miracle from God to deal with all these diseases and pestilence that's coming upon our earth. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, it's a new day today. Amen. We're, we're about to delve into a different subject today. Amen. Praise God. And uh, we're going to be talking about finding calm in a chaotic world. Finding calm in a chaotic world. How many of you know that we live in a chaotic world right now? I mean, it seemed like it all kicked off in 2020. But let me tell you, it began before then. It, it just so happened to hit the fan. I mean, you know, sometimes things could have already happened, but, but it don't reach epic proportion until it hit that fan. Last year, it reached epic proportion. And you're talking about a stink bomb. I mean, it got real chaotic, amen, in this world. Yeah. Amen, praise God, hallelujah. So we're going to be talking about, Pastor, well, how can I find calm, C-A-L-M, calm in a chaotic world? And the subtopic under that will be dealing with anxiety and worry. That's good. How do we deal with this anxiety and worry, you know, in which all of us are going through some things and know of other people, <laughs> All that good stuff. Amen. So you can take the time right now and share with your friends and let them know that we are online now. Praise God that we're on Facebook. Amen. YouTube. Amen. Praise God. Let them know this is your way of soul winning. This is your way of getting the word out. Amen. You know, the Bible says he that winning souls is wise. Well, now, you know, we can't go door to door no more, but we can share with other people on Facebook. Let them know to tune in. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right. Well, get ready to take some good notes. We got a good lesson for today in Jesus name. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, once again, we thank you that, yeah, this is the day that you have made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Now, God, we thank you that as we delve into your word, that your word will come alive to us, Father. And Father, we thank you that your word is quicker and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. And Lord, I thank you that my tongue is like that of a ready writer, ready to write upon the heart to your people. And Lord, we thank you for the subject matter uh, that you've been dealing with me on the inside of my heart about how to deal with anxiety and worry and finding calm in a chaotic world. And Father, we just thank you, Father, that this is what you call a word in due season. And Father, this word is very necessary for today because of what has come upon this earth. So, oh God, we just thank you today uh, that your word will feed our spirit, man. We'll renew our minds and heal our physical bodies. And Lord, we, we reach and agree with me. 
we reach an agreement with you, Lord, in advance to give you all of the glory, honor, and praise for what shall be. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Turn with me to Matthew's gospel, chapter 6. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Matthew chapter 6. And we're going to begin there. Today we're opening up a new message. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. We're going to call it finding calm in a chaotic world. Yeah. Amen. Are we all set? Amen. Praise God. Everybody ready? You got your Bible app? Everybody ready to get into the word of God? Amen. Praise God. Finding calm in a chaotic world. Yeah, amen. Praise God. I done left my glasses, so I just signaled my wife to go over there and get me glasses. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Glory to God. I tell you, Jesus is alive and well. Praise the Lord. All right, Matthew's Gospel, chapter 6. And let's pick up there at verse 25. Again, we're talking about finding calm in a chaotic world. Again, I'm Pastor Wright. We're here in uh, outside of Jackson, Mississippi, New Beginnings Christian Life Center Church. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right, Matthew's Gospel, chapter 6. Let's take a look at verse 25. Notice the words of Jesus. He said, therefore, I say unto you, take no thought. Now, underline that right there. Take no thought. Take no thought. And I want to uh, make sure that you pay very close attention because he's going to say that several times. I said he's going to say that several times, which means he's trying to get a point across. Mm -hmm. He's trying to get a point across. If somebody continues to tell you something over and over and over again, they're trying to draw emphasis to something. They're trying to get you to pay close attention. Well, the same thing here with Jesus. You're going to see here, Jesus wants us to pay very close attention. So he says in verse 25, he said, take no thought. Take no thought. Now, you note there, take no thought. This deals with your human reasoning skills. Don't think about it, okay? Take no thought for your life. What you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body. And what you shall put on, that's your clothes, is not life more than meat and the body more than raiment? You know, we live in a time now where, you know, the unemployment rate is high. I mean, you got millions of people that don't have a job. Those who have lost their job, looking for a job. So you see how all these scriptures line up. But notice here what Jesus said. He said, don't even think about your life. How are you going to eat? Have you ever been there before trying to figure out Mother Hubbard's cupboard is bare and you're trying to figure out where's the next meal going to come? He said, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on is not life more than meat and the body more than raiment or clothes. He said, behold, verse 26, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap neither gather into barn, yet your heavenly father, yet your heavenly father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? Come on now. Aren't you more important than a raven? Aren't you more important than a bird? Uh -huh. He said, are you not much more better than they? Question mark. Verse 27, which of you by taking thought he says that again. Which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought? Third time for raiment. Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more, underline that, 
Shall he not much more? Yeah. He's the God of how much more? He's El Shaddai. He's a God that is more than enough. He said there in verse 30, Shall he not much more clothe you? Talking to the saints. Yeah. yeah. You. You. Shall he not much more clothe you? O ye of little faith. Verse 31. Therefore take no thought. There it is again. Saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? How many of y'all been taking thought? How am I going to make it? I done lost my job. Yeah. What are we going to eat? Where are we going to live? Where are we going to stay? Etc. What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or where will, shall we be clothed? Jump over there to verse 34. It said, take therefore, Jesus says again, take therefore no thought for tomorrow. For tomorrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is evil thereof. Wow. That's something. Now, let's read this from the Amplified Bible. Matthew chapter 6, begin there, verse 25. He said, therefore I tell you, reading from the Amplified Bible, that simply renders more clarification given to the text scripture. He said, therefore I tell you, verse 25 from the Amplified, that stop being perpetually uneasy. <laughs> Don't forget, our subject is finding calm in a chaotic world. Our subtopic is how to deal with anxiety and worry. Okay. The Amplified Bible says here in verse 25, Therefore I tell you, stop being perpetually uneasy, anxious and worried about your life. What you shall eat or what you shall drink or about your body, what you shall put on, is not life greater than food and the body than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather in the barn. Yet your heavenly father keeps on feeding them. Are you not worth much more than they? Oh, who are you by worrying and being anxious? Can add one unit of measure of cubit to his stature or to his span of life. And why should you be anxious about your clothes? You know what the Amplified Bible says. Why should you be anxious about your clothes? Consider the lilies of the field and, and, and learn thoroughly how they grow. Neither do they toil or spin. Yet I tell you, even in Solomon, all his magnificence, his excellence, dignity, and grace, he was not arrayed like one of these. But if God, verse 30, so clothed the grass of the field, which today is alive and green and tomorrow is tossed to the furnace, will he not Will he not much more surely clothe you? Verse 31. Therefore, do not worry and be anxious. You need to jot that down. Don't worry and don't be anxious. Don't be full of anxiety and worry. Find a neighbor and tell them. Tell them, don't be full, don't be full of anxiety and, worry. anxiety and worry. Be anxious for nothing. Yeah, verse 31 says, Therefore do not worry and be anxious, saying, What are we going to have to eat? What are we going to drink? What are we going to wear? He said, don't, 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 don't get all bent out of shape. Yeah. Why? Because God will take care of you. Mm -hmm. And that's what I want to get across to you today. God will take care of you. You can experience calm in a chaotic world. Uh, yeah. Notice here what the Amplified Bible says about Verse 25, if you decide for God, hmm, living a life of God and worship, it follows that you don't fuss. Huh? It follows that you don't fuss about what's on the table at mealtime ah. or whether the clothes in your closet are in fashion. There is far more to your life than the food you put in your stomach, mm -hmm. more to the outward appearance that clothes you hang on your body. Look at the birds. They're free and unfettered, not tied down to a job description. Careless in the care of God. And you count far more to him than them birds. <laughs> Has anyone by fussing in front of the mirror even gotten taller by so much as an inch? Of course not. All this time and money wasted on fashion. Do you think it makes that much difference? 
Instead of looking at fashion, walk out into the fields and look at the wildflowers. Flowers. Yeah. Drop down into verse 30. If God gives such attention to the appearance of wildflowers, most of which are never seen, don't you think he'll attend to you? Take pride in you and do what's best for you? What am I trying? What I'm trying to do here is to get you. Now, this is what the message Bible saying. He said, what I'm trying to do here is to get you to relax. And don't be so preoccupied with getting. Ooh, I like that right there. Amplified says here, verse 30, he said, what I'm trying to get you to do, this is what the Lord is saying. The Lord is saying, I'm trying to get you to relax. And that's what this message is all about. We're trying to get you to relax. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm trying to get you to relax, to be so preoccupied. Don't be so preoccupied with getting stuff. So that you can respond to God's giving. <laughs> glory to God. I said glory to God. He goes on to say, don't worry about missing out on everything. You'll find all your everyday human concerns will be taken care of. Wow. God's trying to get a point across to us, y'all. God said that I'm going to take care of all of your needs. Don't get all bent out of shape. Don't get so worried. We got to learn how to find calm in a chaotic world. Now turn with me to Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. Said, don't think about it. Don't think about it. Don't. He said, take ye no thought. Take ye no thought. Don't take thought. Don't get overly concerned. Some of us have become overly concerned if we're going to make it. Yeah. 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 So we're talking about how to find calm in a chaotic world. How to deal with this anxiety and worry. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 said, be careful for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Now read this from the Amplified Bible. It said, don't be anxious or worried about anything. But in everything, every circumstance and every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, continue to make your specific request known to God. Yes. Note there. Don't be anxious and worried about anything. Another translation put it this way. Don't fret or worry. Instead of worrying, pray. Let petitions and praises shape your worries into prayers, letting God know your concerns. Mm -hmm. Before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness, everything coming together for the good, will come and settle you down. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful what happens when Christ displaces worry at the center of your life. Wow. Ah, that's good. Don't fret. Don't worry. No. God will take care of you. Another translation put it this way. It said, don't be pulled in different directions or worried about a thing. I mean, y'all remember that old song? Don't you worry about a thing. I mean, y'all remember that? Don't you worry about it. Yeah, okay, all right. Don't be pulled in different directions or worried about a thing, but be saturated in prayer throughout each day. We're talking about how to find calm in a chaotic world. Uh -huh. Don't be pulled in different directions. And that's what the cares of this world will do. It'll pull you to the right. It'll pull you to the left. You'll be north, south, east, west. You'll be all over the place. But he goes on to say here in Philippians 4, 6 from the Passion Translation, it said, be saturated in prayer throughout each day, offering your faith-filled request before God with overflowing gratitude. Mm -hmm. Tell him every detail of your life. Uh, wow. Tell him every detail of your life. Living in the world, we live in a world just living in this world and experiencing life 
can give you a lot to worry and to be anxious about. Now, people today are overwhelmed as we look at society today. People today are overwhelmed by shootings, terrorism, political mayhem, unemployment, and an outbreak of viruses, just to name a few. This world is out of control. It's chaotic. And according to the American Psychological Association, 24% of American adults say that they are overwhelmed by anxiety and depression. 24% of American adults say that they are overwhelmed by anxiety and depression. Yeah. Uh, of course, thanks to them cell phones and social media, do you know what that's been doing? Them cell phones and social media? And I'm not knocking it, but it has interrupted our meals, yes. our social gatherings, yeah. even our dates, mm -hmm. our family time, and even our sleep. Yeah. It's the world in which we live. That's why people are so full of anxiety, why people are so full of worry. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with having a cell phone or social media, but you got to put it in its proper place. Hallelujah. So the big question is, how do you find peace in a chaotic world? How do you find peace in a chaotic world when you got, it don't make a difference if you turn on the radio, the television, your cell phone, it's, it's, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. And it's causing a great percentage of American adults to feel uh, overwhelmed by anxiety and depression. That's true. That's true. So how do you find peace in a chaotic world? In fact, you got some people who worry more than others, uh, depending on their personality or better yet, should I say, whether or not they're being doers of God's word. Mm -hmm. You just got some people who worry more than others. Mm -hmm. Then you got some people who are world champion warriors. <laughs> Have you ever met a world champion warrior? You know, these are the people, you know, that they, they anxious and fretful about everything. You got to be careful what you say to them. I mean, they are DEFCON 10. I mean, you, you just got to be careful. They're they full of worry. They're full of fret. Uh, they're full of anxiety. Yep. I dare to say that's some people's personality. Then on the other hand, you just got some people who are not doers of God's word. Worry and anxiety is something that we all battle with, both young and old. Mm -hmm. And these are just things that we battle with. And uh, you got to be so careful. And when we become fretful, if you think about it, when we begin to fret and be worried as Christians, it means one thing, that our focus and attention are on the circumstances. Mm -hmm. That's when we get over into get it, fret and worry. Well, what happened to us as Christians? Well, our attention is focused on what we're going through and not the word of God. And have you ever met some people? Let me tell you, I have met some folk that have told me, you know, Pastor, I can't help but worry and to be overly concerned. Mm -hmm. Have y'all ever met people like that? Yeah. They'll tell you in a minute. And if you ain't careful, they'll bless you out. That's some of them cuss you out, bless you out. I, I can't help but to worry. I, I can't take it. I mean, I've met people like that, man. You, you pray with them, and after you pray, they still worry. Mm -hmm. You pray with them again, they still worry. Just full of work. You got some folk who are world champion warriors. I mean, world champions. Mm -hmm. They just can't help but to worry. That's because their attention and their focus are on the circumstances. While we look not at. I hear that on the inside of my spirit. While we look not at that which is seen, but that which is unseen. For that which is seen is temporal, which means it's subject to change if we continue to put our eyes on that which we can't see, the word of God. And what the word of God will do in the spirit. The word of God will change the scene. Yeah, the word of God will change what you can see what you are so emotionally distraught about. See, the word of God will kick in yeah. and it'll change all that. We're talking about finding calm in a chaotic world. Then, you know, I think about Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 10. It said, the joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy of the Lord. Mm -hmm. But as we have been learning over these several weeks, we got to learn how to work with the Lord. We got to learn how to work with the Holy Spirit. Our Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is our helper. 
but we got to learn to work with the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. Yeah, it's our strength. I get happy when I think about what the Lord has done for me. Amen. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Turn with me to John's Gospel, chapter 15. John's Gospel, chapter 15. Now, today we're not going to get over into too much. Uh, uh, you know, how to deal with anxiety and worry. Now, we, of course, we're always going to touch it, but we're going to talk more about that next Sunday. John's Gospel, chapter 15. But again, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Yeah. And that's why we got to maintain our joy level. I said we got to maintain our joy level. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. But like I said, you got some people out there, they are world champion warriors, man. Man, they, they I can't help but to worry. Oh, I got to worry. Oh. Yeah, you got to watch out for people like that because the next thing you know, you'll catch what they got. <laughs> you'll look up and you'll be worrying. Right. Let me tell you, worry and stress and anxiety, that stuff will put you in the hospital. Come on now. That worry, anxiety, and stress, stress will put you in the hospital so fast. Let me tell you, stress will cause you to have heart attacks and, and just all sorts of stuff. Mm. Strokes and you name it. That's stress. Stress is something else. I've done a study on stress, even from the natural. I can remember starting out in the ministry, man, I got all stressed out. Because when you're in the ministry, you're dealing with people. You're in the people business. And, you know, you take people's problems home with you and all that. You know, you got your own little list of problems. Then you go home with a hundred more people's problems. You add all that stuff up. That stuff, it'll catch up with you. Listen to me. It'll catch up with you down the road as you get older. And, and nowadays, you know, it's catching up with young folk. Yeah, yeah. You got young people having heart attacks and strokes and all that. And, and a lot of times, it's not always what you eat. Now, eating has some things, that, no doubt about it. Yeah. Eating's got some things to do with it. But even more than that, even more than that, praise God, the doctors will tell you, stress will put you in the hospital quicker than eating wrong. That's right. Mm -hmm. Stress will put you there. Stress will blow your heart up. Stress to do all sorts of stuff. I've even talked with people to say, well, Pastor, I, I eat right. You know, I, I definitely eat right, and I watch what I eat and all that. I don't eat all that red meat, et cetera. You know, and then they break it down to you. But, and, but they still ask, well, Pastor, why did I wind up in the hospital? I said, oh, okay. Yeah, you're talking to the wrong guy. You're talking to the right guy. You're talking. I'm going to tell you right now why you wound up in the hospital like that, why you had that stroke, and why you all, it's because of stress. A lot of people in there, let me tell you, the percentage of why people are in them hospitals and have got to have stents and, and now you got your little physical stuff happening. But let me tell you, that's stress and anxiety and worry. And we live in a time, like we said earlier, I mean, you look at all the things that's going on now. You know, you got unemployment. What is it? About 30 million people unemployed, something like that. You got political mayhem. Man. Yeah, you name it, and it happened in politics. And last year, woo, I, I'm just glad we're into a new year. Paul, you talking about political mayhem. Wow. I mean, on both sides. It's just out of control. Just politics was out of control. Sure. Unemployment rate. You got an outbreak of viruses. Uh, you, you know, you got terrorism. And we ain't talking about no national terrorism. We talking about right here. You know, local terrorism. I mean, you got shooting, people were dying. Man, all hell broke loose last year. And, 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 you, and we're trying to figure out why people are so full of anxiety, so full of worry. This is the time, man, where, you know, we got to put the word of God. Hey, we got to focus on the word of God. We'll talk more about that later. I'm so anxious to jump into the answer real quick. But no, we got to lay the foundation first. Amen. Yes, Praise God. What did I say? John 15. Verse 10, Jesus said, if you keep my commandments, the word of God, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. And I love verse 11. It said, these things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be what? Full. Remember in Nehemiah 8, 10, 
It said, the joy of the Lord is our strength. And now Jesus says here in John 15 and verse 10 and 11, he said, if you abide, live in, dwell in, take up residence in my love, then my joy will remain full in you. So I'm giving you some keys. I'm trying not to, but you know, I can't help but give out some answers. Somebody might not tune in, but next week, you know, but you know, we, you know, we got to saturate ourselves in the love of God. Yeah. Your faith won't even work apart from love. Mm. Amen. So when you walk in the love of God, let me tell you, then you will you will experience calm in a chaotic world. Mm -hmm. Amen. Praise God. And uh, you'll be able to deal with anxiety and worry. You got to fall in love with Jesus, man. Mm. There's some of you today, you've been looking for answers because of all the things that have come upon the earth. You know how the scripture says that young men's heart shall fail them. Why? Because of what has come upon this earth. And so, you know, Spirit of God has been dealing with me and that what people need to hear right now, yes. man, they need to hear uh, that there is a healer in the house. Yes. They need to hear that you can find calm in a chaotic world. Yes. People need hope. People Amen. need hope right Amen. now. And, and, and that's why we're teaching this right now. Yes. Amen. Praise God. There, there, there's hope. Jesus is our hope. Amen. While we look not at that which is seen, mm -hmm. we got to be careful. We're looking at that which is seen too much. Now, there's nothing wrong with making yourself aware, but that is not where all your thoughts ought to be. And that's why Jesus started out in our text scripture. He said, take no thought. You shouldn't be meditating on that stuff. You shouldn't be meditating on television and meditating on all this other social media stuff. You got to spend some time in the word of God. You got to fall in love with Jesus. That's why I love that song, falling in love with Jesus. That's the best thing I've ever done. You fall in love with Jesus, then you will not be meditating on, on all this social media stuff and, and you're getting overwhelmed with it. You overblow, you turn it on. Nothing, just talking about all the sick people that's dying. Every time you turn it on, somebody dying, dying, and, and this and that, and the epidemic and the pandemic, and, and the, now they're talking about it's a new strand of COVID. What? It's just, we're still trying to deal with the old COVID. COVID number one. Now they're talking about COVID number two and three. Different strands coming into the United States from overseas and all that. I said, oh, no, turn the television off. I didn't hurt enough. Good God. Now, you, you know, you hear it to make yourself aware. Then you turn that mess off and get into the word of God. Nehemiah 8, 10 said, the joy of the Lord is my strength. You cannot, you hear me? You cannot sit there and watch that television all day. Amen. Where you're hearing about the pandemics and all the violence and the, and man, they're constantly showing violent situations, violence, 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 violence. Violence in, violence out. I mean, my God, show something positive happening. Do something positive. You can't just hear negative all the time. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If all you hear is negative, you will eventually become negative. Now, once again, balance it out. Don't go get frizzled in the head. Don't get squirrely. We're simply saying, make yourself aware and then you get out of there and go get in the word of God. I'd rather turn on a good Western flick. I'll turn on Bugs Bunny, anybody. I'll turn on something positive. I cannot sit here all day and watch television of negativity. Mm -hmm. It'll go turn on Wheel of Fortune or something. I mean, you can't sit there and watch that mess all day. We're talking about finding calm in a chaotic world. And if you're trying to find calm, how are you gonna find calm allowing social media to take your world over. Got to be so careful. Got to be so careful. Now, again, we're not knocking social media. Social media is very important. Yeah. But I, I believe we need to be a lot more positive yeah. with social media. Yeah. Amen? Mm -hmm. Praise God. I like to know. I would share with my wife. Okay, we hear about the pandemic, right? And it's a very important to be informed. Mm -hmm. Don't be stupid and ignorant, Right? Be informed. But then I said, every now and then it'd be great if they tell you about the positives, that people are getting healed, and they, they, that, the, that the, the medicine is working or something. Tell me, is anybody getting free from it? Are people recovering? I mean, say something positive too. Not just all negativity. 
There's folk dying, folk dying, folk dying, folk dying. Okay, are they getting well too? Yeah, there's thousands of people uh, that's getting well. There's, there's thousands of people that's getting healed of it. Okay, well, mention it. So you can bring us some hope. You understand what I mean by that? So you can bring Americans hope. So that you can bring the world some hope. Give the world some hope to all this. There's a method to the madness. You got to have some hope too. Can't just have all evil, all negativity. Amen. All right. Praise God. I didn't get too many amens. But that's okay. That's okay. But Jesus said in John 15, he said, if you abide in my love, then my joy will remain full in you. My joy will remain full in you. Amen. How about St. John chapter 14? St. John chapter 14. Some people wake up with the news and go to bed with the news. Negativity in the morning. And then when you go to bed at night, negativity. Now me, I'm a different kind of person. Now I can't speak for everybody. I, I'm very imaginative. So I, I can't go to bed with all that mess on my mind. Man, you go to dreaming stuff and thinking up junk and Oh, no, man, you just can't do it. How about when you get up in the morning and pray? Yeah. Amen. Praise God. Something, turn on the weather channel or something. But don't. Amen. Let's move on. St. <laughs> John chapter 14, verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. And, and let me say this too. If you got negativity all day, how do you expect to heal? Some of y'all are believing God to be healed of COVID-19. Some of y'all are believing God to be healed of anxiety and worry. Well, how are you going to get healed if you got nothing but negativity around you? Uh, negative friends, negative media, negative music, negative everything. Everything's negative. You're not careful, you'll become negative. All right? Praise God. So, St. John 14, 1 said, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. Believe also in me. Let me read this from another translation. Let's see if I got it here. Yeah, there we go. St. John 14, 1 from the Amplified. It said, don't let your heart be troubled, distressed, and agitated. If you believe and adhere to and trust in and rely on God, believe in and adhere to and trust in, rely also on me. Mm -hmm. uh, now, let's jump over there to verse 27. St. John 14, verse 27 now. And then we'll read that from the Amplified as well. Notice it first of all from the King James. It said, Jesus said, peace I leave with you. Okay, My peace I give unto you, not as the world gives, give I unto you. Let not, notice what Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So he says it again. Mm -hmm. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Verse 27 from the Amplified Bible says, peace I leave with you, my own peace I now give and bequeath to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you, do not let your heart be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Stop allowing, hear me, hear me. Verse 27 from the Amplified says this. Stop allowing yourselves to be agitated and disturbed. Yes. In other words, allow this mess you bring on yourself. You bring this on yourself. You bring it on yourself. You know, if you're around certain folk, you, you know what's going to happen. Have you ever started the day out positive? Then you got around the wrong folk and all of a sudden everything got negative? Like, man, my day was doing great until I talked to so-and-so. Or my day was going great until I turned the news on. I was having a wonderful day and I turned that news on. There it is. They wide open again. And it kind of, it, it, sometimes it make your day seem gloomy. Yeah, right there. It just changed your perspective. So verse 27, part B said, stop allowing yourself. Note there, you, the understood subject is who? You. God ain't going to do this for you. There's certain things that you got to do. You might have to change the channel. 
Come on now, y'all. I'm trying to move on. You might have to change the channel. You might have to change the station. You might have to change friends. Because, see, whoever you around, you're going to catch their cold. Why? Because it's contagious. Mm -hmm. Whatever you around real close to, you're going to catch whatever they got. And if they're negative, you're going to catch negativity. Come on. Stop allowing yourself to be agitated and disturbed. And do not permit yourself to be fearful and intimidated and cowardly and unsettled. And that's what bad news will do. It'll cause you to be unsettled, man. Boy, you'll just be all over the place. You know, and you know, sometimes you gotta be careful too. It will upset your stomach. Have you ever heard bad news and it just woo, it just got yeah. sour? It's like, oh boy, yeah. I was doing fine until I heard this or until I heard that. Yep. Come on now. So, you know, we're talking about how to find calm in a chaotic world. How are you going to find calm and, and, you, and you're subjecting yourself to situations? Mm. Now, there are situations that sometimes that are out of your control. That's different. The anointing they kick in. The anointing they kick in and, and will smooth things out for you. And you'll see how the Holy Ghost just come right on in. Mm -hmm. That's when it's out of your control. But when it's in your control... You can control that television set. Come on, talk to me. You can control a lot of time who you around, who you associate with. Negative all the time. Negative, negative. You know, we ain't going to never get married. Ah, oh, I'm getting old now. I ain't going to never get married. Well, if you hang around people that's saying that, you're right. You ain't going to never get married. You need to hang around some folk that talk the opposite. Yeah. Come on now. And you know, you need to tell that friend of yours, hey, you ain't going to get married, but I'm getting married. You ain't going to buy a new car. I'm buying me one. You ain't going to buy a house, but I'm going to get me a house. Glory to God. So you got to change. You know, there's certain things that you got to do. We can't put this off on the Holy Ghost. Put this off on Jesus, everything. Put everything off on Jesus. You got to change your own self. What Paul said, I think myself happy. You got to choose your thoughts. It's your choice. You can't blame everything on the devil either. The devil's job is to throw stuff at you. But that don't mean that you got to accept it. You, you know, you got to be responsible. Don't let nobody steal your joy. Don't let nobody rob you of your peace. Don't let no situation rob you of your peace. Don't let COVID-19 rob you of your peace. Don't let unemployment rob you of your peace. Right, right. Come on now. You got to choose joy. I choose joy like that old song said. I choose joy. You got to choose to be happy even though you might be unemployed. Yep. You can still be calm in a chaotic world. Yep. Come on now. You can be calm with COVID-19. If you focus your attention on the word of God. If, if you're in the hospital, you can't be sitting there watching Oprah. You can't be sitting there watching something else. I ain't got no problem with Oprah. I think Oprah's a wonderful person. Let me straighten that out for some of y'all star lying. Oprah's a wonderful woman. You know, I watched her. We got her books, all this kind of stuff. But I'm saying, man, you need a healing. Oprah ain't going to help you with no healing. You better get into the word of God. Turn on to a good Christian station. Nowadays, you got to be careful with the Christian stations. Come on now. We got to focus on the word of God. Not all this other stuff. Amen? Uh-huh. Yeah, I, I thought about an old song. How many of y'all remember this old song? When the world all around me is sinking sand, on Christ the solid rock I stand. When I need a shelter, when I need a friend, I go to the rock. Don't say, when the world all around me is what? Sinking sand. Well, that's what we're talking about. We live in a chaotic world. When all the world all around us is sinking sand, on oh Christ, the solid rock I stand. You got to get into the word of God. You got to change your environment. Uh -huh. I said you got to change your environment. And the way you change your environment is by getting into the word of God. Right. We're going to talk more about that next. Boy, I want to jump into that right now. I ain't got time to do that. My time about up. Amen. Praise God. But you got to change your world. How? With the word of God. With the word of God. No matter what you're going through, you can rest in the peace of God, which surpasses all men's understanding. As we read from one of our text scriptures in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, the peace of God. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. hallelujah. Now, let me talk about this in closing.
Turn with me to Mark's Gospel, chapter 4, and we'll close with this. Mark's Gospel, chapter 4, and verse 35. We're talking about finding calm in a chaotic world. No doubt, look, you, you live a while, <laughs> and you start experiencing life. Life and live a while will cause, let me tell you, it will bring worry to your doorstep. <laughs> let me tell you, all that stuff will knock at your door. Just, just, just living in this world will. With all the hell going on, just experiencing life, you will have wonderful opportunities to worry. <laughs> but I mean, you know, you need to pass up them opportunities. Yeah. You need to pass up them wonder. Let me tell you, I've had wonderful, grandeur opportunities to walk in worry and defeat, mm -hmm. to, to be anxious. Oh, I've had some marvelous opportunity. I had some marvelous opportunity to be worried about everything. Oh, but it's your choice. You can receive the package or you can tell the man from UPS, you got the wrong house here, buddy. Mm -hmm. Take that package down the street. I refuse to worry. Say that with me. I refuse to worry. Say, I refuse to fret. I refuse to fret. Yeah, you got to refuse to worry. Those packages, oh, you've had marvelous opportunities to receive worry and fret and anxiety, huh? But you have to turn that package down. When the devil come to your door, <laughs> as it were, like UPS, when the devil come to your door, now, I don't receive that package. Mm -hmm. Is it health and healing? I'll take that. But what else you got in there? Hold on, let me look at this back. Oh, worry, for, oh no, I don't receive that. No, 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 no. Take that package down the street. I don't need that package in my life. That worry and fret will put you in the hospital. Huh? Stress, worry, fret, anxiety. It'll kill you. It'll kill you. Yeah. Amen. Mark's Gospel, chapter 4, verse 35. And the same day when the evening was come. You know, Jesus had just spoke on the sower, sow the word. He had just taught them how to be hearers and doers of God's word. He had just taught them how to produce in the kingdom of God some 30, some 60, and a hundredfold. He just finished doing a seminar on the sower, sower of the word. How to be victorious in this life. Just finished the seminar. Okay? All right. Just told his disciples how to be victorious, how to produce in the kingdom of God, how to sow the word of God, how to hear it, how to receive it, all of that. Just taught it. Verse 35. And that same day, when the evening was come, he said unto them, let us pass over to the other side. You know, sir, they got a word from the Lord. Yeah. They got a word from the Lord. And how many of you know that one word from the Lord will change your world? All you need is one word, uh, one word, one word. You don't need a million words, but just one word will change your world. Well, they got a word from the Lord that you'll get to the other side. Now, he did not say that when you're going to the other side, that there was not going to be no persecution and affliction. He didn't say that. He said, boys, you're going to get to the other side. You'll make it to the other side. He didn't mention that there wasn't going to be no storms. All that there wasn't going to be no persecution. No, he didn't say that. He gave them word. He said, you'll make it to the other side. Verse 36. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there was also with him other little ships. Verse 37. And there arose a great storm of wind and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. That's persecution and affliction and, mm -hmm. and the storms of life came. Yeah. Come on now. Come on. How I many you know that Jesus never promised us a rose garden? Even with roses, there are storms. That's right, that's right. You know, you go over there to Mark's Gospel, chapter 10 and verse 30. You know, it, it talks about, you know, not only will you get that hundredfold return with houses and brothers and sisters and mothers, but it says with persecution. Huh? Note there, arose a great storm of wind. Verse 38, and he, Jesus, was in the hind part of the ship asleep. Wow. Finding calm in a chaotic world. Jesus was asleep in the midst of a storm. And they could have slept in the midst of a storm as well. 
He had just taught them earlier that seminar on the source of the word, how to be victorious, how to produce in the kingdom of God. All they had to do was just act on the word of God. Jesus told them, you'll get to the other side. Pass over. All they had to do was just act on that and, and, and go and get a nap right with you. Jesus napping, I'm napping too. Glory. I'm a nap too. Oh no. They got all bent out of shape because the storm came up. And uh, then they went, verse 38, and Jesus tapping him on the show. Gina, Gina, what's up, man? <laughs> oh, I ain't signed up for all this mess. You told us that we'd get to the other side. What is this mess? The storm then came up, beating up again. I ain't signed up for this. Well, Jesus told you, you'll make it to the other side. <clears throat> he said, you'll make it to the other side. He didn't say it wasn't going to be no storms. And not only is this a word for them then, it's a word for us today. Jesus promised us that we'll make it to the other side, but he did not promise you that it wasn't going to be no storms. Come on. He said, part of your 100 fold return is with what? Persecution. It's with persecution. Yeah. And I believe a lot of Christians echo the same thought today. I thought being a Christian means that there will be no problems and storms in life. Mm -hmm. Just like these old boys here, they got bent out of shape. Somebody better go wake Jesus up. And of course, then, you know, they went there tapping him on the show. Jesus, get up, man. We're going to die. Mm -hmm. We're going to die. I just gave you a word. I gave you my word. My word to you was, you'll make it to the other side. That's all you need. One word from God. That's it. That's it. Oh, no. Jesus, you're going to have to get up. Man, I ain't signed. I can almost hear one of them probably say, I ain't signed up for this mess. You said we make it over there and that's it. We got storms and hurricanes and all this mess going on. I ain't signed up for this. And that's how some of us are today. We probably tell Jesus the same thing. I ain't signed up for all this. I thought that when I became a Christian, I wouldn't have no problems. There would be no persecution, no affliction. Come on. Yeah. And, and, and so is Jesus, you better get up. You better get up and do something about this. Let me tell you, watch this. Jesus, here's a word for you, has done everything that he's going to do about it. He gave you his word and that's it. Over 2,000 years ago, he died on the cross. Jesus has done everything that he's going to do. All he's doing now is forever living to make intercession for us. Now is something we're going to have to do. Mm -hmm. He's already died for your victory. He said he will whip. Ain't that what the scriptures say? Over there in, uh, what is that? In 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Jot the scripture down. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. He said, I will with the temptation make a way of escape. No fair. He said, hey, I'll give you the strength to make it through. <laughs> he didn't say you wasn't going to go through. He said, oh, you're going to go through. I'll be with you in the middle of it. <laughs> oh, Jesus. That's a word for somebody right there. Jesus ain't never promised you no rose garden. No. He said, oh, he said, I promise you that you'll get to the other side. He didn't tell you how you were going to get there. Some folks think just because you become born again that the, the, that the trip is going to be hunkadory yeah. and that nothing will ever happen wrong. You won't have a flat tire. Nothing will go wrong. No, that ain't life. That's not real. He said, with your hundredfold return will come persecution. Mm -hmm. And so they went in there to wake Jesus up. And like any great leader, he stood up, verse 39, and he said, peace, be still. Mm -hmm. And the wind ceased. Now, they were supposed to do exactly what Jesus did. He had already taught them earlier that day that you were supposed to speak the word of God. Come on now. Mm -hmm. So Jesus did exactly what he wanted them to do. Right. Jesus did exactly what he wanted them to do. Mm -hmm. Jesus got up out of his sleep and he spoke. He said, peace be still. The wind ceased. And there was a great calm. Jesus said, man, why y'all so fearful? Why y'all so timid and afraid? How is it that you act like you ain't got no faith? And people, Christians today are that way. They act like they ain't never been taught nothing. All them years you've been under the word of God. All those years you've been taught the word of God. And, and so in life, as you're going to the other side, a storm come up. Huh? And, and some people want their leader to speak to the storm. No, the time going to come 
when you're going to have to speak to the storm. You got to take authority. Yeah. Come on. Jesus is already. Don't want you pulling Jesus in. Look, Jesus said, I'll be with you in the middle of it. I'll be right there with you. But there's something you're going to have to do. You got to bind and loose. Come on now. That's a whole nother, another subject that's for another good, day. Good, you got to do something about the yes. devil. I said you, that's a word to somebody. You got to do something about the devil. Quit them up. Come on, Jesus. I plead the blood. Listen here. Jesus done done all the bleeding he going to do. He didn't set all the blood. He, look, Jesus done done it all. He's giving you the victory. Now you got to maintain the victory. There's something you got to do. You're going to have to get up and bind the devil. Bound on earth is already bound in heaven. You got to bind. Glory to God. There's something you're going to have to do. You sit there all day and, and the devil will pick with you and agitate you until you say enough, enough of this mess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you get sick and tired of being sick and tired. You got to put your foot down. Yeah, enough of this mess. Oh, this Haven't you ever done that before? Ah, oh, that's enough of this mess. I ain't taking it no more. See, until you get fed up, the anoint won't kick in. <laughs> Until you get fed up, the anointing won't kick in. You got to say, I'm tired. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I'm tired of being broke. Uh, I, 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 I'm tired of anxiety. I'm tired of worry. See, some of us fall in love with anxiety and worry. Some of us want to be sick. Why? So we can get some attention. You got to get sick and tired of being sick and tired, man. We talking about how to find calm in a chaotic world. Jesus was calm. In a chaotic situation. There was a storm and Jesus sleep. He chilling. He relaxing. Well, God wants us to chill and relax. I said, God wants us to chill out and relax mm -hmm. in the midst of a storm. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 11. Uh, Matthew chapter 11. And let's stop here. Matthew chapter 11. But you're going to have to speak that word, man. And we just, uh, you know, Jesus ain't no genie in a lamp. Oh, no. He, Jesus ain't your spare tire. He ain't no genie in a lamp. He ain't no parachute. No. It's something you're going to have to do. Jesus has done everything that he's going to do for you to walk in victory. Jesus has done everything that he's going to do for you to walk in victory. Now all you got to do is speak the word of God. Just like Jesus talked to them earlier about the sword, so the word. He, he got up and did what he thought they should have done. Come on now. Glory to God. Note there in Matthew chapter 11 and verse 28. He said, come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden. And I'll do what? I'll give you some rest. Jesus rested. Yeah. He found calm in a chaotic world. And he wants us to find calm in a chaotic world. Next Sunday we're going to talk more about how do you find calm in a chaotic world. Now I've already given you a, a, a few reasons or, or, or ways that you can find calm in a chaotic world. But next week we're going to really dig into that. Praise God. So Jesus, sleep in the midst of a storm. Come on now. We're going to talk about the rest yes, of God sir. as well. Yes, Amen. Sir. So did y'all get something out this lesson yes, today? Yes, Amen. Sir. Praise yes. God. We're yes. talking about finding calm in a chaotic world. Yes. Amen. All right. Heads about. I've said enough. Amen. Glory to God. Uh, we thank you, Lord Jesus. Perhaps there might be someone here today that don't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. If that's you today and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and maybe, you know, you feel like, Pastor, you are so right. This world is chaotic. Man, my house is chaotic. City is chaotic. The nation is chaotic. How do you find calm? Well, Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and life. No man can come, come unto my Father except they come by me. Yeah. 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 Jesus is our bridge over troubled water. If that's you today, you know the word of God says in Romans chapter 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Verse 13 says there, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So I want to say a prayer with you today, and I'm going to encourage all the other people who are listening in to pray along with us, but I want to pray with those who are searching for Jesus.
Yeah. Let's pray. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, Dear Heavenly Father I, just heard in your word, I just heard in your word, you said, Lord, you said, if, Lord I confess with my mouth, if I confess with my mouth that Jesus, that Jesus is Lord, and if I believe in my heart in my that God heart, raised him from the dead, God has him from the dead on the third day, the third you, day said, Lord, you said, Lord, I'll be born again. I'll be born so, again. Right now, Lord, so right now, Lord, I confess with my mouth, with my mouth Jesus is right now Jesus is right my now, Lord, Savior, and Master. And I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead on the third day. Lord, I call upon you now. Come into my life. Lord, do something wonderful with my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Well, we're so excited for you. Amen. Praise God. The Bible said that the angels in heaven are rejoicing over one person that received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Man, we're so excited, so happy for you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, I've got a book for you. In fact, I just wrote a book, and it's called Where Do I Go From Here? You know, once you become born again, you got to know what to do. First of all, we want to encourage you to get into a good church on where you can grow and develop and become everything that God wants you to be. Mm -hmm. But amen. If you just accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, we want to get this book into your hands. Amen. This book will help guide you and develop you as a new believer. Amen. Praise God. Such as some of the topics says this. What do I do when I sin? What do I do when I miss the mark? Well, inside this book here, it'll help you grow and it'll help you to develop in the name of Jesus. Now, for you to get this free book, it's, it's a free book. Amen. You need to go to our website. Amen. You need to go to our church website. That is New Beginnings, plural, with the S, New Beginnings, CLC.org. New Beginnings, CLC.org. And once you get there, then go to the prayer request tab. Go to the prayer request tab and fill out that little information, you know, name and address, so that we can send you your free booklet. Amen. We want to send you this free booklet that'll help you to grow and develop into what God wants you to be. Once again, we say congratulations. Welcome to the family of God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. How I many of y'all are excited for them? Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Well, I mean, we're blessed by the word today. Amen. Amen. How to find calm in a chaotic world. Lord knows we're living in a chaotic world, yeah. but we can be calm. We can be sleeping the hind part of the boat of life mm -hmm. while all hell is breaking loose. Yeah. Now, I warn you, when you're back there asleep, some folk going to get mad at you. What you doing back there sleeping? Ah. You see all this mess going on. How is it that you can be so calm, cool, and collective? I don't understand that. I don't understand why you don't worry. Have y'all met those people yet? Yeah. Now, I don't understand why y'all can't worry and be all upset and crocodile tears and all that. No, because we know that God has everything under control. Amen. He will with the temptation make, make a way of escape. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Yes. If God be for me, who or what can be against me? Yes. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. And, and, and that's where we find our rest. And we'll get into some of these things next Sunday. Amen. Amen. But that's where we can rest and be in the high partnership. And there could be a hurricane. It could be a uricliding, as the Bible talks about in the book of Acts. But yet, we're in the high part of the ship, knowing we're going to get to the other side. Why? Because we got a word from the Lord. We Amen. Got we got a word from the Lord. Therefore, we can put the pressure on the promise. Yes. <laughs> we can put the pressure on the promise. Amen. While we look not at the things which are seen, but the things that are unseen, that's the word of God. Yeah. Word of God will change your world. It'll turn your world upside down. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Well, it's time to give. Amen. Glory. Opportunity to prosper. Glory. Amen. The Bible says in Malachi, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in mine house. Prove me now herewith. Here with what? Your tithes and offering. If I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you don't have room enough to receive. Yes. And you know, I thank God for them windows. There are more windows than doors. Mm -hmm. He said, I want to open up the windows of heaven, pour you out a blessing that you ain't got room enough to receive. Mm -hmm. Then he goes on to say, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Amen. Yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yes. 
The word of God goes on further and say, give and it shall be given unto us. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over so men get back to our bosom. Amen. God loves a cheerful giver whose heart is in his giving. Now there are three ways that we encourage you to give. Number one, through PayPal. Amen. Through PayPal, and that's New Beginnings, plural, with a S, C-L-C dot org. That's New Beginnings, plural, with a S, C-L-C dot org. Yeah. Or you can give by way of PayPal, or I should say Cash App. You can also give by way, number one, PayPal, number two, Cash App. And that's through New Beginnings, plural, C-L-C. New Beginnings, plural, C-L-C. Or finally, you can give by way, just simply just mail it in. And that's at P.O. Box 320-658. P.O. Box 320-658. And that's Flowood, Mississippi, 39232. Amen. Amen. Well, let's hold up our offering to our great high priest and let us agree in faith. Once again, Lord, we do count the honor and privilege to give this day. And Lord, we thank you that as we give, that you'll give back to us good measure, prince now, shaking together, running over, so men get back to our bosom. And Lord, we thank you that as we give, it'll cause new beginnings to continue to enlarge its tents so that we can reach out to a lost and dying world. So more spirits can be fed, more minds renewed, and bodies sealed, and ultimately cities won to Christ. Yeah. Ministering spirits, go forth now. Cause our return to come unto us, for we believe that we receive a hundredfold return in this lifetime, wealth and riches of being a house. And furthermore, Lord, we thank you that you will rebuke the devourer for our sake. And Father, we just thank you that you give us power to get well, so that your covenant may be established upon the earth. So Lord, we come the honor and privilege to give today in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. And amen. amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, glory to God. I tell you, God is good all the time. Amen. Praise God. Now, last Wednesday, I told you we had some good news. Well, we have reached an agreement. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. We have reached an agreement uh, with the owner of a particular church. I'll be getting out a booklet to you. And in that booklet, you will see the details. Now, uh, we have reached, how do we put that last? Lease. A lease purchase. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be leasing for the next two years and then we're going to purchase it. Amen. Mm -hmm. Praise God. So uh, we got some we got some homework to do. Amen. And I'll be shooting out to you a booklet, uh, a beautiful full color booklet that's going to tell you exactly what's going on. Uh, uh, amen. With the future now. That's it. With the future now uh, project. Amen. Praise God. And that's our building fund. Now, listen. We're not raising no offering. I don't believe in, you know, raising, a, no, we're not raising an offering. We're raising a vision. And that's what this thing is all about with the building and all that. It's all about people. It's not uh, so I can have a church building and you can have a church building. No, no, no. It's for the people. We're raising a vision, not an offering. And so we'll have more to say about that. And we're going to, uh, uh, we're going to get that uh, building fund back going again. And, and the booklet will explain to you why we're going to have to do that. Amen. Because we're going to have, a, of course, a larger down payment, which is a blessing for us. But we're going to do a lease with the, with the option to buy. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Isn't that the way you say that? Yeah, lease? it's a lease purchase. That's right. We're going to be doing a lease purchase. Don't you know that... Can't stop the plan of God. That's right. He can't stop the plan of God. And the Bible tells us through faith and patience you'll inherit the promise. That's right. And so God is constantly unfolding step by step how we're going to have our acquire our church home. And so we're so excited that we're going to be able yeah. to move into this church yeah. that we are purchasing. It's yeah. lease purchase. That's right. And still be able to, it's, it's home. It's yeah. going to be home. It is home for new, new beginnings. Got a home. Y'all <laughs> didn't <laughs> understand. Woo -hoo! Glory to God. I was thinking about today. Mm -hmm. We're 10 years old this year. That's right. We'll be 10 years old. 10 years That's old it. this year. And we're getting our church home. That's it. Y'all, this is something to shout about. God <laughs> is working some things out. Amen. God is doing some things. So we're uh, very excited about what that's going to do. That's and right. did you want to tell them about April? Yeah. And now, uh, now here are the plans. Stay tuned. Follow me. 
Here are the plans, but stay tuned. Let me say it again. Here, Here are the plans, plans but, but stay, stay tuned. tuned. One more time. <laughs> Here, Here are the plans, plans but stay <laughs> tuned. Our very first in-person service will be at Easter time. I believe that's April the 4th. April 4th. April 4th. And uh -huh. in fact, you know, we're going to have to wind up going into two services, you know, because of social distances. And we know we're going to be following the CDC guidelines to the utmost. We will be uh, following the CDC guidelines to the utmost. We will be following the CDC guidelines to the <laughs> utmost. Amen. So, uh, but we are looking at, okay, don't you go out there and say, pass, oh, it's permanent. No, I said, stay this tuned. Is, this, is, this, is, this is the plan. Amen, but well, here's tuned. the plan, and I'll get <laughs> back with you very, very soon uh -huh. uh, when that opening day is going to be meeting in person. in person. Now, we're going to keep Facebook Live Facebook and YouTube. Facebook Live will still go on. It'll always stay on because some well people might not want to come, um, but you can always watch Facebook Live. Like Facebook Live, Live as right. well as you can see the recordings on Amen. YouTube. So, so we're going to always have that. So it's just another right. option for you. Right. You'll be able to come to in service. That's right. Or you'll be able to do Facebook, Facebook Live. Live. Isn't that awesome? Which is a blessing. God is expanding us. Amen. So the idea <laughs> is like on that 4th, I believe it's Easter, April 4th. Mm -hmm. Now on the 3rd is that Saturday. So we're planning on doing a service now. Stay tuned now. But here's the idea. Do a service on that Saturday before Easter uh -huh. and on Sunday. Easter Day. So okay? that we can have social, social distance. distance. That's right. Yes. That's right. And so we'll have more detail about that, how we are, are going to uh, uh, follow the CDC uh, guidelines and, uh, 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 and get everybody ready for that and how we'll go about that. And of course, we always will have Facebook Live. That's right. It will always be there. Now, also, I want to tell you all that your statements will be mailed out this week. Your statements will be mailed out this week along with the booklet, the booklet that is explaining what our what is going future on future now, future That's right. now. Building and because yeah. uh, we're raising a vision. Yep, yep, yep. Not an offering. And so, and, and look, you fool with me. I'm gonna tell you now. Hey, uh, we we'll, we'll mess around and pay the building off. Two years. We uh, hey, we we'll mess around. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go for it. Come on now. Hey, Amen. So we gonna keep <laughs> I mean, giving. Don't believe we're going to keep receiving. We're going to keep giving and receiving. Uh, keep giving and receiving. Keep giving and receiving. Till we pay this sucker off. Y'all got faith out there. Y'all got faith out there. I mean, Y'all got faith. Hey, well, no matter if you're in a storm. Yeah. That's what pastor's talking about. Yeah. Jesus said, we're going to the other side. That's and it. And it don't make no difference what storm Satan brings up. You get COVID vi uh, virus, the, the, uh, the bank saying we're going to wait a minute and all that. We getting to the other side. It don't right. make no difference. Now, how many of y'all got faith like that? How many of y'all with us on that? Hey, hey. This is what we're talking about. We got peace in the midst of a storm. And guess what? God's plan will continue on in Jesus' name. That's how it. many of y'all believe that? Y'all new beginners, folks. Y'all new beginning <laughs> members and supporters. I know y'all got faith because yeah. we've seen it all through 2020. That's it. God That's has been it. doing some supernatural things. Supernatural. And he ain't done. Oh, he ain't done. He ain't done We're yet. just getting started. Uh -uh. We're just getting started. We're just getting Amen. started. <laughs> We're just getting started. He said, hey, what did, what did Pastor say? He said, you better get up and take authority. That's it. And <laughs> we done took authority and we are going in, baby. <laughs> we going in to yeah, our church. That's it. Glory to God. Amen. <laughs> you got so, anything else? Uh, uh, just, wanna, uh, just one uh, person to pray for. Today, we're going to pray for Madison Morrow, Madison, Noreen's yeah. daughter. She's yeah. recovering now from COVID, and as well as Celeste and, 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 uh, and uh, 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 what's it? Austin. Celeste Austin. and Austin, they're still recovering as well. Uh -huh. So we're going to pray for our babies in Jesus' yeah. name, yeah. that they will continue to recover and have full recovery in the name of Jesus. All Christ. I got to say is, Madison and Austin, what you doing? No, that's Celeste and Austin. Oh, uh, yeah. What, Celeste okay, and Celeste and Austin. What y'all doing? We got what the... <laughs> Celeste, what you doing? I know you watching. What you doing? We got work to do, girl. 
Honey, well, go ahead and pray. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for Madison, the Father, for the healing and cure in her body. And yeah. For continued recovery yeah. for Celeste and Austin. And for yeah. all those who are recovering from this virus, we thank yes. you, Father, in the name of Jesus, for full recovery. We thank yes. you for healing and cure in their bodies. For all those who we have prayed for in the past who have had surgery and had different things that come yes. up against their bodies, their loved ones who have done that. We give yeah. you the glory, honor, and praise, Lord, because you are demonstrating that you are the yeah, healer yes. and so we give you the glory honor and praise for their healing for their full recovery in the name of Jesus and yes. we plead the blood of Jesus over them and we thank you father yes. in Jesus name and for each and every person that is looking here yes. all the members of New Beginnings yes. all their families and, 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 and loved ones in the name of Jesus yes. we plead the blood of Jesus over all of us yes. in the name of Jesus yes. over our comings and goings on our over, over all our family over everything yes. that we do we yes. plead the yes. blood of Jesus and yes. we say that no plague shall come nigh our dwelling and we thank, thank you for you. it Father in Jesus, Jesus name. name amen did amen. you want to tell them real quick if y'all got one more second uh -huh. we got a miracle that happened in, 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 in the right family did you yeah. tell them about your mom? no I didn't I told them I would tell them next time but no, you, need you know them. well honestly we for, for, for a minute just this past week a couple of days ago hey, we thought we might lose my mom I mean it, it, it was tough it, it, it was, was it was tough. looking real. It was a storm. It was a storm. <laughs> it was a storm. Amen. Mm -hmm. And you know, my mama, my mama, see that woman know the word of God and see a Holy yes. Ghost woman, yes. and all of us, my family and I, my brothers and sisters, and, and, and Amen. You know, we all went into prayer about it. Yes. You know, yes. the well, doctor. Let me tell you, the doctor just gonna give it to you raw. Mm -hmm. This is what we dealing with. I mean, everything that came out the doctor's mouth was negative. And I don't mean like negative, negative, you know, like the doctor, he, no, no. He was just being honest. This is what's going on in your mother's body. And I mean, he broke that thing down. I said, oh, man. Oh, Lord. I mean, he said, well, she got this. She got that. She got this. She got that. I said, okay, that's oh, enough. I done know. heard enough. I even told my brother, okay, I done heard enough. Now, his my mom God. is 90 years old. And she's 90 years she old, She can't right? have surgery. She can't right. be resuscitated and all this no. and put under anesthesia. That's she's right. too old for that. She's too fragile. And, you know, if you try to do mama's test, you'll break a rib. Mm -hmm. You try to give mama the paddle, you'll blow her heart out. She's too old for all that mess. Right. And the doctor just came, you know, with his report like doctors have to do. Right. And so we went into prayer and started binding and loosening and pleading Taking the blood the of Jesus. And the doctor said so. Then he kind of. Her stomach. He, he, uh, he. He added on to what he had already told us and said, and furthermore, you know how you go, and furthermore, her stomach is all twisted and it just ain't where it should be and out of place and all that. I'm sitting there like, what the, well, how much more you going to add on my mama? It got yeah. personal. Mm -hmm. I'm on the phone, right? And you know, it kind of kind of got personal like, good God, in addition to all the stuff mama got going on, then he going to add on the last part, her stomach. And so... You know, they went and did that CAT scan and all that. We all prayed. And, 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 and well, I think it was that night or, or the next day, next the doctor called my sister and said, listen here, Connie, you know, uh, y'all must have been praying. <laughs> oh, Connie said, oh, yes, we were praying. That's mama. You know, yeah, you better believe we were praying. Right. But he said, you know, her stomach didn't straighten out. For some miraculous reason, her stomach, just everything didn't straighten All out. All the vital signs, Woo! very good. Let me tell you, vital <laughs> signs, everything. Mama doing just great yes. job. And let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, I, we rejoicing on the, we calling on the telephone, we rejoicing. And my brothers and my sister, the doctor says, y'all had to be praying. Because all that stuff didn't straighten out. All in her stomach, intestines, all that kind of mess. Yes. Didn't just straighten out. We yes. said, glory to God. Yes. This is the year of supernatural. Yes. The year of miracles. Yes. Glory yes. to God. Lord, so Lord I thought y'all might want to hear that testimony. I thought yes. they wanted to hear that yes. testimony. Yes. So when we see God doing some supernatural things, God is demonstrating who he yeah. is. Let me tell you something. This is going to be an outstanding yeah. year. Yeah. This is going to be the best year yet. Yeah. The year of demonstration yeah. of God's goodness. Yeah. So y'all want to make sure that you That's be right. a part, that you keep believing, that you cast your cares, that you don't let stress <laughs> and worry come in because we know who the healer is. That's we know right. who the provider is. 
We know who yeah. our peace is. We know who is, who's our everything, and that is the Lord God Almighty. That's it. And I just want to say this in closing. They're giving out medicine right now and all that. God bless you, the whole nine yards. Let me tell you, your trust should not be in that medicine. Uh, it shouldn't be in the medicine, glory to God. Your trust better be in God. And now listen to me. I didn't say anything was wrong with it. I just simply said, your trust should never be in medicine and pills and whatever the doctors give you. Now thank God for it. It'll help keep you alive. All that good stuff, glory to God. But let me tell you, ultimately, Jesus, Jehovah Rapha, mm -hmm. our personal physician, Jesus Christ. Jesus is the healer. All that other stuff do is put a Band-Aid on it. Mm -hmm. It helps you out along the way. And thank God for it. It keeps us alive until we can get our faith situated, right? Mm -hmm. But right. don't forget, your trust ought to be in Jesus. That's and furthermore, I got a lot to say. Oh. I ain't going to say it all today, y'all. Trust me. <laughs> and, and, and praise God. You know, we got a new president and all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, praise God. You know, don't matter to me what party they're from and all that. I ain't into all that. Mm -hmm. You just want the right person in there, whatever that means to y'all, okay? What you trying to say, Pastor? I'm trying to say your trust should not just be in the president either. Mm -hmm. Your trust got to be in the Lord. Mm -hmm. I don't care who in office. It boils down to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Don't put that kind of pressure on a man. Mm -hmm. Don't put that kind of pressure on a human to straighten out everything. Mm -hmm. You know, thank God. You know, we got, I almost called a man Pastor, but President Joe Biden in there. I mean, don't put all that pressure on that man. I don't care who in there. Abraham Lincoln, I don't care if Bozo in there. You can't put that kind of pressure on one person or the senators or whoever. Look, we need Jesus to come in and heal our land. Yes. We're going to talk about this later on. Not today, but it's going to If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves, turn from the evil way, he said, then I'll come in and heal your land. We need Jesus with this COVID mess. You know, thank God for the little medicine and all that stuff they got out, shots and all that. Let me tell you, it's going to require Jesus to heal this mess. Yes, sir. To eradicate it, eradicate. deal with it. Yep. Good out, get rid of all this mess. The power of you God. You know, that reminds me of scripture. Some trust in chariots. But yeah. we trust in the name, the of, the name of the Lord our God. That's it. And so we want to know, we want to just make sure that we always, our trust is oh. ultimately in the Lord. And so when you get your shot or if you get That's your right. shot or whatever medications you take, right. whatever you eat, whatever is going in your body, you yeah. want to sanctify it by the word That's right. that it only be helpful to your body and not That's harmful. Right. That's in right. Jesus name, plead the blood. That's and it. that's the way you do it. I mean, they ain't got to worry and be scared and all this kind of stuff. Right. Whatever medication you're on, if you God take bless the you. shot, if you that's take it. the shot, then sanctify it in Jesus' name. That's right. It'll only be helpful to my body that's and not right. harmful in the name of Jesus. Right. That's putting him as first that's right. because only God can make your body do anything. That, only God can do that. You know that. what? It's like yeah. taking blood pressure pill. Yeah, that's not going to heal you. Look, Jesus is the healer. Mm -hmm. He may help lower your pressure a little bit. Now, you're interested not in a band-aid. You want complete manifested healing. Mm -hmm. And Jehovah Rapha. Yes. Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Oh, I'm reading a book right now by F.F. F. Bosworth Ooh. called Christ the Healer. Ooh, Ooh nice. man. Yes. I have yes. read it once before. Let my, me tell my, you. My. What a book. F.F. F. Bosworth, so Christ the Healer. Glory to God. Book you know what? Our time is far well, we, spent. I'm you. We love you. <laughs> we love you. God bless y'all. Woo, let's get ready. Get ready. Get ready, y'all. Oh, boy. We got some miracles coming in the name of Jesus.